Uh, my name is uh, Sakari Samoy, a citizen scientist here. We are normally taking this uh, water level on a daily basis and I come from this particular community. In case of any catastrophe, I'm the first person to be affected. For example, when the water level goes down and down, then I'll miss taking water from here. I'll be in a very big problem. The research team has been working on trying to estimate the importance of this forest for the, for the water cycle. When we started working in this forest and started talking to different stakeholders, we realized that there was a sort of a blame game without understanding how things were connected. So by presenting this evidence on how water and forests are connected, we are hoping that the actors who make decisions in both sectors also find a common ground for discussions on what solutions are. Forests, as we know, they play a very important role in the hydrological cycle. Uh, first, they protect the water sources from loss of water through evaporation, but also the vegetation in the forest will enhance smooth infiltration, percolation of water through the canopies, down into the soil, through the litter, the water get clean, and then the most of the water also will sink in the soil, and therefore the water table becomes now sustainable, and we get rivers and springs now becoming uh, viable. We need capacity building to enhance the monitoring approach. So the communities and the population need to be educated about these techniques of monitoring. It's important also to revise our curriculum regularly to see how it fits best in this system monitoring uh, of our water resources in the country. Indigenous forests play a very big role in terms of flow of water to the rivers. Compared to this, which is a, a cypress plantation, the ground is more, more or less bare. You can see the kind of service that we have. It shows that there was a lot of rains, probably last night or the day before, and there was a, a kind of runoff. There are many challenges. One, there is governance. You see water and forestry are, and falls under different uh, policies. So there is a need to have those policies synchronized. To my right is the Mao Forest. It borders uh, most of our tea estates. Most of the agricultural lands, when there's erosion, when there's heavy rainfall, there's a lot of soil that gets to these particular rivers. So these sedimentation levels affect the water volumes. So in order to mitigate those effects, Monitoring is a must. The responsible authorities also require support from the government in terms of finances, in terms of facilities for them to be able to monitor the water. By knowing the water volumes, by knowing the water quality, forward planning is possible. The citizen scientists are the local community people. The rivers is their resource and the forest that are adjacent to them is their resource. So they benefit from both because they get the water for their domestic use. They benefit also from the forest because they are able to get firewood. They graze their animals in the forest. And so these two resources are a great asset for them. Wamajina Peter. Imagine Citizen science is a good idea because you find that um, we cannot actually be everywhere. So if the community can actually assist us in collecting the data, then that one is a plus on our side. The main challenges that we normally encounter when we are actually doing this monitoring is in terms of finances because you know to generate water quality data is an expensive process because we require the instruments, we require the, the chemicals. So at times you find that you want to do the monitoring but the necessary chemicals that are needed to generate the data are not there. 
Data sharing in, in general is difficult because people sit on their data. They stick to their data. They try to sell it. It's a kind of power issue. I have the data so then I can make maybe more decisions. Or you need my data, you have to buy them. Information is still power. Of course, this attitude worldwide is changing, but not enough yet. So this is where we come in as well, with the private sector together, also in the Sondu Basin and the communities, to at least have these kind of platforms and exchange. What I collect might benefit you as well, and what you're collecting benefits me as well. So why can't we not share it and try to solve these huge environmental problems that we are facing?